Tonight, details to a ruling this week in Washington decriminalizing small amounts of drug possession. We'll break down why the court made this ruling. Plus, President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion pandemic aid package could mean $1,400 for you and billions of dollars for school, state, and local government businesses. We have everything you need to know about the COVID-19 relief bill tonight. Well, the last of the snow showers exit the region this weekend. I'm tracking a big time warm up for early March. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight on this Friday night. I'm Regina on well, a bombshell ruling this week in the Washington Supreme Court has effectively decriminalized small amounts of drugs. The court struck down the state's law against simple possession, calling it unconstitutional. So that means there's no longer any laws in the books making drug possession a crime. Our political reporter Casey Decker breaks down tonight why the court made this ruling and the wide variety of implications it's already having. Here's a look at the Washington state law that made possessing a controlled substance a crime. The state Supreme Court just narrowly ruled in a 5-4 to four decision it's unconstitutional. Why? Because it doesn't require prosecutors to prove that the defendant was aware they had the drugs. The court determined that violates the right to due process, so they struck down the law. And that means there is currently no law on the books in Washington that makes possessing drugs a crime. Buying or selling controlled substances is still illegal, so is possession with intent to deal, because those are different laws. But right now, having a small amount of any drug is not a crime in Washington. Today, Spokane's police chief, Craig Meidel, confirmed his officers are no longer making arrests for simple possession. As of today, our guidance is that we will still seize that as contraband, but there will not be any criminal sanctions. The ruling also calls into question whether arrests for public drug use can be made. If a 21 year old is next to him with a baggie of heroin, an officer goes by, he can't do anything with the heroin, but for the 19 year old with an open container of beer, that's a misdemeanor. It's, it's just an interesting position to be in. And there are retroactive impacts too. Across the state, pending charges on possession are being dropped. That means some people are getting let out of jail, although Meidel says locally, most people charged with such crimes are just booked and released anyway. Usually within about 24 hours, they're released. So you're, you're not going to find our jail is full of people with only possession of controlled substance charges. It's just not there. The ruling may also mean some people currently in prison could be released or at least have their sentences reduced. And people who lost certain rights like voting due to felony convictions might be able to get them back. But given the recentness of this ruling, a lot of those long term implications remain unclear. One way to clear up that uncertainty would be to pass a new law, one that makes possession illegal, but requires proof defendants knew they had the drugs. For years now, Washington has effectively been the only state in the country without such a law, but the deadline for new laws in Olympia has basically already passed. You know, there are procedural ways to get around that, but the longer you get during session, the more bipartisan the agreement needs to be. There are already plenty of legislators who have been interested in decriminalization prior to this ruling, so it's unclear whether there's even enough political desire in Olympia to replace the law. I think we're going to try. I wish I could say I'm sure what would happen. And in previous legislative uh, sessions, I, I could probably say that. But this one, I don't know, given the direction uh, that the House and Senate have gone on some other issues. Yeah, I would say it's probably less than 50-50 odds that we'll be able to do it in that time frame. Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. New information now. The House currently in the process of voting on President Biden's nearly $2 trillion coronavirus relief bill. Now, the package includes $1,400 stimulus checks to Americans who make less than $75,000 a year and a $400 boost in federal unemployment. It also includes funding for school reopenings, assistance for rent and food, money for vaccine distribution, and aid for state and local governments. Now, if passed, the bill could be in the Senate's hands as early as Monday. Democrats want it on the president's desk before federal unemployment benefits expire on March 14th. Now, the state Senate has voted to ban the open carry of guns at protests statewide. Supporters of the bill say large, heavily armed groups poses a risk to safety. Now, those against it says it violates the Second Amendment. The bill will now head to the House for consideration. 
Homeland Security has seized more than 460,000 counterfeit 3M N95 masks. The fake masks were sent being were used at the Puget Sound region and would have been used by first responders. The estimated cost of the fake masks were up to half a million dollars and just in the past few weeks nearly 10 million counterfeit masks have been seized by federal authorities. Some people who submitted unemployment benefits claims in 2020 may have been affected by a data security breach. The state will be sending an email to those potentially affected in the next two weeks. It will contain information about identity theft as well as a code for a free credit monitoring. Let's take a pause on headlines now. Talk about weather. We really saw everything this week, didn't we? From sunshine to snow and slush and rain, and then even some grapple out driving to work today, Thomas, around two o'clock today. So, what can we expect this week? And is, is it going to be crazy again? <laughs> you know, some of those weather factors all occurred in just 24 hours, right, correct, Regina? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but you had that right. The grapple earlier this afternoon, I saw it too, at just about that same time. Grapple has the consistency of dipping dots. It's like soft tail. If you try to pick it up off the ground, it usually melts in your hands pretty quickly. Might still be seeing some grapple or a snowfall down on the Palouse as of right now. Looks like a slightly heavier band moving through Moscow and Pullman right now. So a few leftover snow showers is what I'm calling it for tonight and perhaps early, early tomorrow morning. Otherwise, the weekend should be mostly dry, but maybe not entirely. We'll cover that a little bit more in a moment. 33 degrees right now. The winds seem to be quite a bit calmer. They've been ranging around that 10 mile per hour mark. I honestly think it's windier on the other side side of the building than where I am right now. So I think the winds might be uh, coming from the other direction here. So overnight tonight, we're pretty cloudy, but it does look like it clears up into the afternoon for tomorrow. It should be a mostly sunny day to kick off our weekend, save for maybe a few leftover snow showers and some of the higher elevation locations tomorrow morning. This is about five or six o'clock in the morning. So look out past to down on the blues might still get a little bit of light snow. That could also be the case on Sunday as well. So we'll show you future tracker through this upcoming weekend and then show you how much warmer and I'm talking a big time warm up heading into the month of March. We'll show you how high those temperatures will climb come next week. So sun and a warm up. I'm really enjoying this. This is good news. That's a forecast <laughs> tailored just for you, Regina. All right, Thomas, <laughs> thank you. Well, the FDA could authorize a third COVID-19 vaccine as early as tomorrow. Today, an independent panel of experts recommended the agency approve Johnson & Johnson's candidate. Now, it is good for adults 18 and older, but unlike what's currently available, it only requires one shot and regular refrigeration, so not a freezer. If fully approved, three to four million doses could be shipped out as early as Monday. Johnson & Johnson expects 20 million doses by the end of March and 100 million in June. So that combined with the other two companies, Pfizer and Moderna, would be enough doses to vaccinate 130 million adults by the end of next month. That's about half of the adult population in the United States. So by the end of June, that number climbs to 400 million doses. So that would be more than enough for the nation's adult population. Chaz Health has opened a COVID-19 vaccine clinic at Gonzaga University. The clinic will be open daily until March 2nd. Patients can get vaccinated at Gonzaga. Zaga's field house in the Martin Center or in the parking lots adjacent to the McCarthy Athletic Center and School of Law. Vaccines are available by appointment only for those who are eligible under the state's phased vaccine distribution plan. Chaz will be coordinating directly with their patients on scheduling their appointments. Well, as soon as next month, it could be easier to get a coronavirus vaccine for those who are eligible. State health leaders said that more vaccines are on their way, increasing the supply significantly by mid-March. This week, the state was allocated 260,000 doses and are expected to get 280,000 next week. Mid-March looks even better. The state is predicting upwards of 320,000 doses a week. The expected numbers for March don't account for Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccines. Well, if you're looking for something fun and safe to do this weekend, you are in luck. Bring your family. You can have uh, some fun times downtown. We'll explain coming up next. And later we have new information about where to get a coronavirus vaccine. Our Whitney Ford breaks it down.